A vector quantity such as force has both size and direction. If we think of an everyday practical application of forces, such as playing snooker with Yorkshire puddings and bananas, it's possible to have a small force, so a gentle tap. This gentle tap would represent it by a short arrow, since the magnitude of the force was small. Alternatively, we could really belt the Yorkshire pudding. That was a much larger force, so therefore if we were using the same scale we would need to draw a much longer arrow. When we're dealing with vector arrows we need to remember that the length of the arrow represents how big the vector is. In the case of a force, this means how hard the force is either pushing or pulling. If we hit the arch put in any different direction, then we would need to draw the vector arrow to represent the force in a different direction. This time I've drawn a medium sized arrow because the force was somewhere between a gentle tap and really belting it. There's no limit to the number of directions in which the different forces can act. But when we look at the vector arrows, we notice that this one seems to be acting in the x direction, this one seems to be acting in the y direction, and all the others are somewhere in between. So all the other vectors are partly in the x direction and partly in the y direction. Another way of putting it is to say that they all have a component in the x direction and a component in the y direction. It's often much easier to deal with vectors if we divide them up into their x and y components. If the phone hit the orange with a force of 5 newtons at an angle of 50 degrees to the x direction, I could represent that force by drawing a vector arrow. We could either draw the arrow to scale or we could use trigonometry. But whichever method we use, if we want to find the x component of that force, we simply have to work out how far does that arrow go in the x direction. And to do that, we can complete a triangle where this side of the triangle represents the x component of the force and this side of the triangle represents the y component of the force. Using trigonometry we can say that x divided by 5 is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, so that's equal to cosine 50 degrees, which means that x equals 5 cosine 50 degrees. Five times cosine of 50 degrees is 3.2 newtons. And to find the y component, y divided by 5 
is opposite of the hypotenuse, which is sine 50 degrees. So y equals 5 sine of 50 degrees. 5 times the sine of 50 degrees, which is 3.8 newtons. If you find it easy to visualise, it's also perfectly in order to draw the y component starting from the same point as the original vector. The length is exactly the same, it gives exactly the same answer.